Welcome on into the Command Center Podcast. I'm Logan Paul, today with Fred Smoot and Santana Moss. And guys, we were talking about in the production meeting, girls basketball. <laughs> Women's basketball. <laughs> it's on top of everything. Unbelievable. It's the best basketball in college right now. It's crazy, man. And I think it has a lot to do with, uh, you know, back in the day, Pat Ewan played at Georgetown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he would play his freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. So we get we get a history. Yeah. Now with the with the girls, we just watched Angel Re- uh, Reese go against Iowa last year. Mm-hmm. Like so this is a this this I'm turning to a trilogy almost. Yeah. So I think right now, women's basketball <laughs> has captured our imagination because one, they stars stay. Yeah. Right? Two, they repeatedly go to war against each other. And I think that's the romanticized part that we're missing in the male's basketball. I think one of the things we spoke about, and I'm not sure how long ago this was, I think it was me and you were sitting in the room just talking about how how much of their games have changed. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? These, these women uh, uh, nowadays, their game is on the level of some men. Yeah. And I think they have to even be more, uh, I guess you can say, critical about certain things that they do like men has you know different ways of beating you they yeah. can they can out jump you, you they can dunk the ball they yeah. can do so many things these women have to be skilled precise. they yeah. have to have skill they yeah. have to be able to dribble they have to be able to shoot so yeah. their, their, their game is transcendent and and i think it's one of the things that you know when you watch the game it pulls us into it because you see these women now and they're elevating and it's one of the reasons why cube saying hey Halen, come holler at us. Big three. You Five know? million. Show me some love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So do you think she should do it? I think so. I yeah. think I think not yep. only for the sake of the money part of it, yeah. I mean, because who, who's to say she's going to make that in her career yeah. with the WNBA? They don't make see, money. that's the problem with but the I WNBA. But I do believe now yeah. they're bigger stars, so they're getting yeah. these these shoe deals yeah. now. They're getting different. Yeah, she so got a deal with she, Nike. She will be able to make she it up probably over time. But yeah. I think that five million would be yeah. straight so cash. Yeah. It, it would be something that she can do something with her family out the gate and not have to worry about yeah. trying to do this over a career. You well, know what I think this is how because WNBA wages. It's terrible. Yeah. Like, that's why these girls are staying in college. They make yeah. it more with NIL deals. And also, they go overseas, too, because yeah. they get more money. This is the way I think you blow up the WBA, but also get them paid. I had this thing I call high school proposal. You remember when we go to high school games, the mm-hmm. girls play, yeah. then the boys play? Because sometimes when I go to a Wizard game, by the time I sit down for a little bit, the game is over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a. It's the quickest. Yeah, you're doing so much. Bro. Yeah, you're it's going so quick. Downstairs. So what if we went to a, a Wizards game, but the Mystics play first, mm. and then the Wizards play second? Now you feel the seats. Now, you, you feel, feel the, the seats. seats. Plus, I get like six hours, four or five hours to be here. Yeah. All right. So. Think about how much uh, I buy from the concession stand now. Mm-hmm. Think about my daughter watching their game. Then she watching this game with me. I just think that's the way to truly monetize it is to put it in the high school format and make the girls play before the hey, boys. Hey, we got to put a petition out, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fred, so, yeah, I, all these ideas, yeah. That's bright, though, because I, honestly, bro, you, you know, you know, I haven't been to a Mr. game yet. Yeah, and, and I, not to I, say I, that yeah, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah. But who goes to those games? You know what I mean? I watch them on TV every now and yeah. then. You can see the seats now starting to get, you know, a little more full than they was before. But I think that's a great point, man. Yeah, yeah. Excellent point, Fred. All right. Just a reminder, you, we're about to you by Bet365. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe every sport should be epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet365. Use the QR code to sign up. Deposit 10 and choose between either. First bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to 1000 and if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a match refund in bonus bets. Or bet and get offer and place a bet of $5 or more and get 150 in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary Bet365, official sports betting partner of the Washington Commanders. Must be 21 plus, physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and won't help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs> Why'd you read it like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like all out of breath, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Shakespearean voice, right? <laughs> the Hamlet. The Hamlet voice? <laughs> All right, so we can't escape it, boys. Yeah. It's a free agent frenzy, and yes. it's back. And we got some theme music for it, the yes. one that Fred voted on. It's horror music. Yeah. Why? I don't understand the horror because music. Because you know what? It's free agency is so scary. <laughs> because <laughs> because you watch these guys be great somewhere else, and you automatically think they're going to be great for you. But one out of five free agents actually help your team win. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's glorified as it is. And, you know, some of these guys sign $100 million. Like, think about it. For instance, New York Giants signed Brian Burns. All right? Gave him $100 million. What if Brian Burns ain't $100 million 
pass rushing. Yeah. So it's scary, but it's also satisfying, just like Halloween is. <laughs> Halloween is scary, but you know you're going to get that candy all day, and it's going to be fun. This guy over here. All right, well, so these guys aren't the $100 million guys. Yeah, they yeah. have just been signed. We got Jeff Driscoll. I don't know how to say his name. I just called him OZ when I played with him, but Ola, Olamide Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry if that's wrong. I called him OZ. That's yeah. what we're going to call him. Yeah, OZ. Jerry McNichols Nichols and then Malachi Walker are the guys that signed here over the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. since our last show. Yeah. And just high level, like, what did you think about these signings? Like, what does this mean for the team? And, like, what are the role these guys have? Just I, keep it high level. I, I mean, high level, I just think one of the things that stands out with all these guys you see in eight year veteran, uh, six year veteran. Yeah. Four year, five, you know what I mean? Like Seven they're years, veterans. Yeah. They're guys that's gonna be you know these guys have sweat equity in the game already. Yeah. These guys have played a num a number of years where they put enough on film that these coaches say, you know what, they we have a spot for them. We have a mm. spot for them to either earn them a spot on this team yeah. or come in here and compete and show, you know, this team of what we're trying to, you know, become. So yeah. I, I think it's great because one of the things that we talked about leading up until, you know, the draft is what we had to do is basically build a team all over. I yeah. mean, we had 20 some odd guys on the team, you know, under contract. Yeah. So yeah. you have to build that team. You have to build the base of that team up. And I think these are just added pieces to the base. I just think when you got a, a <clears throat> when you got a band, like everybody can't be Michael Jackson. Somebody got to be Tito, right? It, 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 like the floor of the band has to be raised. And yep. that's when you, when I look at these guys, I say, all right, they raising the floor of this building. They understand that we only good as the 53rd person on the roster. Yeah. Well, if the 53rd person on the roster is a seven year vet that's been there, done that, mm -hmm. ready to play at a drop of a dime, yeah. that tells me a lot about where the ceiling is going. Mm -hmm. all right? And that's what I'm saying. So if you raise the floor, the ceiling can only get higher. I think one thing, too, that stands out about seeing some of the things that we've been doing here, I talked a lot to you. You guys about um how my 10 years here went to three playoffs yeah mm -hmm. you know it's crazy that with, with the guys that we had 10 years yeah. I only had three playoffs appearances only won one game yeah. one playoff game in those 10 years in four years with the jets we went to three play, same thing three yeah. but that's in four years yeah so we was going automatically almost every year when i was with the jets and one of the things i noticed about that team I came in as a guy who they, you know, they wanted to depend on. I got hurt my first year, but they got a lot of us, you know, in the draft. Like my year, the year before me, they got Coles and those guys. Yeah. You had John Abraham, you had Ellis, yeah. Uh, you had Chad Pennington, Sugar Ray they Mickens. The, they was in the draft before yeah. me. You had me. Then every draft they got some young talent, but when it comes to the the base of our team, it was all veterans. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why we was going to, to play playoff out, because yeah. you had guys, you just said it, guys that if somebody went down or somebody wasn't ready, you had a veteran there that could step in and be solid. I'm talking about he might not be, like you said, a Michael Jackson or that Curtis Martin yeah. Yeah. or that, you know, that Wayne Corbett, but he was solid enough that he can go out and get the job done. So, when I'm watching these guys strategically build this team together, they're getting veterans. They're getting guys that have leadership that's going to go out there and, like you said before, show some of these young guys what it takes to be a pro yep. and how it is to be able to be one of those role players to come in and just do your job. You need that. You need Big Shot Bob. You need Robert Ory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, one the star. But when you need me to make the yeah. play, I will be there and I will be waiting. Can't wait. Yeah, so like, you know, I played with uh, OZ when I was in Atlanta. Yeah. He was a rookie when uh, it was my last year there. And he's a guy that, Tim, I think you would like a lot. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's tough. He's competitive. Kind of like what you're talking about, guy. Yeah. Like, he could come in and spot duty and play a little bit. I played with Jeremy McNichols when I was in San Francisco. Again, that guy that's always... He's, he's always been the bridesmaid, never the yeah. bride. Like, yeah. always kind of on the fringe. Yeah. But has played played in Tennessee. He was a good third down back for them. Carried the ball well. So, again, just a guy that adds some flexibility to the roster, some depth, some any, competition. Any return skills with the kids. Yeah, he did. He, yeah, I think he returned kickoffs. He's kind of that He's kind of that body type, right? Yeah. He's kind of, yeah. you know, he's six. He's 5'8", but he's like 100. He's like 205 pounds. He's like like a little muscle guy. Yeah, yeah. He's tough. He's competitive. And I, I just, you know, he played a lot as a rookie, mm -hmm. and I thought he did a really good job, and he's played a lot in Philly, like relatively speaking, mm -hmm. given the depth there. So I think those are guys that are really interesting. Jeff Driscoll's also interesting to me as a signing because 
he's a he's a veteran athletic quarterback he's an athletic quarterback mm-hmm. he's a veteran guy that again has all that experience and so I don't know when I think about you're probably drafting a quarterback at two yeah, yeah right probably gonna keep three so yeah, yeah. you need to have they you say want, they want to have four going into training camp period yeah okay. but I think so. having guys around him that have played a lot yeah. you know like Jake Fromm I like Jake Fromm a yeah. lot yeah but having guy with this kind of experience it's been in multiple systems that could possibly another another resource mm-hmm. for a young quarterback going in I think is is a pretty cool idea so every, every time you say Jake Fromm I just I'm on the cusp of saying from State Farm I know it's very close (laughs) it's very very close it's very close but yeah I think it kind of speaks to the general philosophy right and Mm Tanya you talked about this too and I think this is a really good point is I think Peters has made a made a pretty clear assertion or statement that he wants to kind of build through the draft Mm -hmm. but in order to do that you need to have the scaffolding in place right that the roster of veterans is there to kind of take care of everything that you need to man so important and so. then I think with the new kickoff retiring rules, I think guys like Zaki is going. They, they got they got some more staying power now. Because yeah. when you take that that one play out the game, you take a guy like B. Mitch out of your game plan. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, just a reminder: we're about to buy at Bet Three Six Five. At Bet Three Six Five, we don't do ordinary. We will every we believe every sport should be epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet Three Six Five. Use the QR code to sign up and uh, deposit ten and choose between either. First bet safe in an offer by placing a bet up to a thousand, and if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a match refund in bonus bets. Or bet and get offer and place a bet of five dollars or more and get one hundred and fifty in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary. At bet three six five, official sports betting partner of the Washington Commanders. Must be twenty one and older and physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem. And once help, call my man, Fred. <laughs> Gambler. I need help. I need help. No, you're providing, Fred, you're providing the help. I'm, yeah. I'm here for them. Like, if you need help, I'm here for you. They like, yeah, I'm, tra- I'm trapped in the MG. Fred going to answer the phone. I help got, is on the way. I got $3 left in my pocket. Give me 10 minutes, man. I'm coming to get you. The, uh, well, so, Fred, you were starting to talk about the kickoff rule. Yeah. And yep. so let's, or the, the, the new kickoff rule. So let's yep. talk about that rule a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, so the ball will be still be kicked from the 35-yard line. That's yep. Yeah. not a change. Every player on the kicking team, other than the kicker themselves, is will now line up with one foot on the team on the returning team's forty, 40 yard, yard line. line. Yes. Right? Yep. During this new kickoff, no players can move until the ball is fielded by the Caught returner. By the return. So this is the old XFL yeah. rule, and I think yeah. Fred, you brought up a great point right out the gate that yeah. this now makes the kickoff returner a relevant position you need on the Again. roster. Again. Yeah. How but how do you guys feel about this rule change? I know it's a departure from tradition, yep. mm-hmm. and a lot of football purists, yeah. uh, at least in my experience, Don't have been like a change. little bit critical of this, but I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on I it. I just want to see it work. I mean, honestly, I saw a, a snippet of it watching the XFL a year ago, yep. and it wasn't that many big returns. You know, you yep. probably had two or three of them ran back the, the entire spring, I guess you yep. could say. and But you saw... Guys be creative. And I yep. remember, you know, I had a guy that I played with in in New York, Tory Woodbury. He was uh I forgot what team that he was he was a special teams coach for. Now he's a special teams coach here at Howard. Yeah. All right. It's so crazy that that how, you know, full circle he's back in the area. But um <clears throat> I remember him telling me, I asked him about it, I'm like, bro, how did like how do you like that? He was like, Man, you gotta be creative. Like yeah. we we're finding ways to be able to use these guys like they're in the backfield. Like it's mm-hmm. basically like a running back getting the ball out of out of the backfield. You have to Bring guys from one side, do yep. different things, you know yep. what I mean? Try to, you know, get that, to spring that kick or whatever. Yep. So I just want to see it work. I want to see how creative some of these special team gurus are on this level and see if we can get more returns than two or three this year. Well, the thing about it is they want to see uh-huh. the return just happen. And, yep. and what yep. we was getting in the NFL was, I think, maybe 30 to 25% even just ran the ball out. Right mm-hmm. now, with that kicking rule in the XFL, that's eighty five percent return because yeah. most of the kicks uh, they bringing them out because it for the for the return team it, it's in your favor to bring it out now. Yeah, yeah there's a penalty uh, now. Yeah. The ball comes back out to the third 30. yard line. I yeah. want to say, yeah, yeah. So it it, it it says now let the return man return, mm-hmm. and and I think it it just it brings another level to the game because we know this offense defense very exciting, but special team got something very exciting about it. But it also shows you too that they're more worried about you know 
wanting to see the, I guess you can say the excitement part of it, then worried about a guy like Jeremy Reeves who ran, who made his living running down on kicks. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think it takes away from guys who really made a living out of running down on kicks. Because now you put me in a compromised well, I, well, position. I think they slowed the impact down. No, the, no, that's yeah, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, no, yeah. no doubt is about safety. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, how many guys this is going to affect mm -hmm. that was that was just you know. I'm a kickoff demon, you know. What I mean, yeah, I'm a, yeah. you know, we, we had so yeah. many guys on our yeah. team that we knew that man. I, I'm gonna sit here and watch this kickoff because those guys. Sean Taylor there sitting in the middle of that thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm finna go peel somebody. That's yeah. where I want to watch. I'm, I'm going to be. It's gonna be interesting to me just to see what it takes from those guys who made a living just doing that. You know. Uh, see, I, see, I, when I was watching the XFL and I was covering. This was back when during COVID. You know, mm -hmm. it's a couple years ago now. But one of the things that stuck out to me is I do think it makes those special teams guys more relevant because this yeah. was a play that was almost completely dead. Like you yeah. could get away. Like think about it, Joey Sly. Like one of the things, like his superpower was they they had no returns allowed this year. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he just kicked the ball at the back of the yeah, end zone. Yeah. yeah. So now. Those guys, you could put anybody out there. I yeah. could go out there and cover a kick. It didn't mm -hmm. need to be Sean Taylor. It could yeah. be Logan Paulson, who's terrible at covering mm -hmm. kicks, and no one would even know, right? Yeah. And so I think, like, now you're trying to promote that this play is relevant again. Mm -hmm. You're going to get guys who have special teams value. Yeah. The back-end roster guys are not just going to be who's the best four-string linebacker. Yeah. It's like who also can play teams. So I yeah. think yep. it helps. It adds value to guys, in my opinion, after watching the XFL two guys like Jeremy Reeves because this is the same format that you do when you're doing it in practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like people yeah, forget right. that. Like you're you right. you yeah, short, short the distance. You're right. You're right. So yeah. it's the right. same skill set that you're utilizing when you're covering kicks in yep. practice yep. that you use in games. It's just, again, like Fred said, the impact's not quite. I get your should. point too because I wasn't looking at it like this because, yeah. you know, it's, it's we always pride it uh, those guys on the team, especially the kickoff team, to be able to run. Yeah. yeah. And so now, if you're not a runner, yeah. but you still can make, you can tackle. Yeah. Tackle. Yeah. You, ain't gotta, you, ain't gotta, you ain't gotta worry about yeah. you running. We gonna put you right here, you know, up front, and and when that guy get the ball, go make a play. So I get your point with that. Well, yeah. this, 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 I think it opened up the the NFL to say welcome back to the Mike Sellers and the Rock Cockrights. Mm. of the world the yeah. people who made their living on special teams I, mean, I just think it makes it more relevant like yeah. i think you could get away with having bad guy like bad relative term here bad guys covering kicks and bad guys on the return team because yeah. it just wasn't a thing you had to yeah. do very often yeah. and now it's something you're going to have to put some time in on to your point mm. get creative from a coaching standpoint and we got to teach skills now we yeah. got to teach skills on how yeah. we're going to block this how we're going to return this i got to have a guy who's going to hit this because yeah. say what you want about the blocks that returner still has got to bro you got to be you, you no gotta, he still got to he still got to hit the he still got to be and, cardio pass yeah. he's got to get that's the toughest part like when i'm watching <laughs> it was like pulling teeth last year watching the xf fail because yeah. I'm like you can't it's, it's no right way to hit it like you yeah. gotta go full speed you gotta, or you gotta be patient one yeah. or the other you know what I'm saying yeah. and so it, it's not I say I'm 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 gonna pay attention from the standpoint of, I want to see the return part of it yeah but I understand the part of what you you know the point you're making about you don't have to be a, a guy that's you know that can run fast to get down anymore. Well, I think you're gonna have to because returners are usually fast and yeah. if you know we were all one bad angle mm -hmm. from Getting dusty, but this right here now, you know, it's no angles. Yeah. It's, it's like you right here. Like the only thing you can do is block a guy well. Yeah, yeah, if you, you can, can block, a you guy can make well, sure you get that behind in that hole, so you can be like and be tight because I'm coming off. But, but if know? one of them returners hit that thing running, and, 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 and like think about it, we go. It's it's, it's going to be a small burst. Yeah. You're going to wait till he catch it. You're going to burst, but then you're going to have to break down. Yeah. Like so, that small burst, and then you get to that breakdown. Now I got to find that runner. Yeah. That's gonna, it's gonna be different. I'm gonna need them to be chasers. But I'm gonna need my kickoff team to be great chasers. But if you watch the XFL and you saw what I was, because I paid close attention. Oh no, you to know it. we went to the game. Yeah, we together. went to a couple of games. It just seemed like it was a bunch of just like okay. It's gonna be the ball gonna be down right here because yeah. they ain't going nowhere <laughs> until one or two guys burst one. You yeah. know. You know, have. Well, one of the things they showed when they made the rule announcement is the teams in the XFL that were the most creative. Mm -hmm. So they were running, you know, reverses, is, yeah, and running counters, reverses, yeah. counters, and bringing. then all of a sudden it takes it because, like, think about it. This is this is nerdy football talk, but essentially, right now, it plays like the run duo, yeah. you're just blocking straight, right? Yeah. And you're asking somebody to win a Find one, -on -one which is tough, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the teams that were successful, they were running it like power and counter yeah. or outside zone, and yeah. if you can get that kind of line of scrimmage action there, yeah, then you can get a pretty dynamic runner so yeah. it's it'll be interesting to see what it turns into i'm really glad 
from a football standpoint that the play is now relevant. Yeah. That yeah. I actually have to watch the play. I used to like literally I I record the game mm. and buzz through on the TV copy. I wouldn't even stop because yeah. it's going to be a touchback. It's going to go to commercial. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Right. But now I got to watch. I got to watch the play. Yeah, watch and the so play. and I think it's going to help guys again like Zacchaeus, guys who have some returnability yeah. to find a home on a team. And I third cover down kicks. at fourth running back. Yeah. You know? and, and they might be different skill sets than what we're traditionally accustomed to. Mm -hmm. But you better be able to shock and shed. Yeah. Get to that football and make. Yeah tackle so yeah. uh, I'm excited for that one the other one that I think is a little bit maybe more controversial because I actually think people are coming around on the kickoff thing is the hip drop tackle and this one to me seems like it'll be impossible <laughs> just, just tell us defensive players not to show up no more I, just tell us not to show up anymore but you don't have to tackle like that though we already can't listen I mean if you saw some of the tackles that they was basically highlighting saying you can't do bro it's obvious like bro you're gonna hurt somebody the like only that. reason I'm jumping on your back is because you, you gotta step on me already but that's why you better jump like, no, but it's so it's, so let's be clear I, I can still tackle you from behind yeah. I can still I can still do a hip drop yeah, yeah. like I can still tackle that way yeah, yeah. and just to be clear Australia rules rugby took this tackle out last year or two years ago and everything's been fine yeah. it's a very specific action it's 200 plays from last year's nfl it's not yeah. anytime i'm behind you i tackle you it's not me tackling yeah. you and falling on your legs it's when you are dragging me mm -hmm. and i intentionally drop my weight onto your legs hey, which you is know, a play is so fun that if you tackle correctly yeah. it shouldn't be an issue it's so mm -hmm. funny this tackle came because of one day in quinn do y'all not remember? Remember, it's at Seattle. They started to what they call alligator. It's tackle. a gator roll, which is a, a different tackle it, than this. Yeah. But it it started because we couldn't hit we couldn't hit high no more. Mm -hmm. All right, so one rule change forced this rule change. Right. It, it it was it wasn't it wasn't because the high. It was because of the helmet to helmet contact. The helmet to helmet. So they went and they consulted with the rugby leagues. Yes. And the way rugby leagues coaches, so like traditional like high school, like yeah. you know, you're out there. It's like get your head across, across the ball, the ball and, across the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and so now you got to get now with an alligator tackle. Your hat goes behind the ball, mm -hmm. but you get into an alligator roll. And if you don't get the roll right away, <laughs> you're going to fall in the dude's legs, probably. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. So one rule uh, birthed the other one. Yeah. 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 But, but I th So ultimately, let me just say this. I do think that the rule on helmet to helmet contact makes players safer, allows players to have longer, healthier lives post-football. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is an important rule. This is an interesting rule because now it's kind of, like you said, it's a consequence of that initial rule change. Yeah. I, I just don't know because like when you look at the so they did the thing on the NFL Network where they showed clips that they thought were hip drops that actually wasn't weren't hip drops yeah. so even people who are who know what they're looking for are having a hard time identifying <laughs> this tackle so that's the thing it's like it, it happens so quick so like are you gonna just call it if someone gets hurt I was, I was gonna say that's like the is that really because yeah, there's plenty of time people have made that tackle and guys got up it's fine I, I've been hip dropped tackle a it. ton in my career me like, too it just plenty happens yeah. hey when I played Roy, offense Roy, Wing, Roy Williams was good at that he was doing it a different way though he would come drag yeah. and then dive he on your damn all legs. the time yeah, yeah so he got the, he was the guy that got rid of the horse collar yeah so I just think I think it's a, I appreciate the NFL's response Effort. and motivation mm -hmm. to make the game safer. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's still a pretty physical game. Like when you watch games on Sunday, like, like they're still big hits. Guys have adapted to the tackling rules. I just don't know how you give this to the officials and be like, hey, this is super subjective. Legislating. Legislated. Yeah. yeah. And so what I did here, because I was complaining to somebody about this, is that the, the NFL is actually not going to encourage refs to call this penalty unless it's very obvious, yep. they're going to find players post-game All right, to kind of get it out of the way. I mean, I don't know what you think yep. about that. It's just a, I don't know. seems like it's going to be very uh, complicated. That's like me going through a light, and I know I stopped at the light, and then you're going to give me a ticket in the mail. Yeah. Like, I don't like that. Yeah. You know? like, like, find, give me a flag if I did something wrong. Mm. Yeah. Don't make me get home, and, and then I look in my locker. I got yeah. this doggone thing. You got fined last yeah, envelope. Give me 5000 yeah. No, that's... that's so, <laughs> No, that's absurd. I think I think we all appreciate they're trying to make the game safer for the players. I just don't know. I just don't know how you call this play. Hey, it's honestly. like trying to take the body slam out of rest. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, you just can't. I'm, no. I'm sorry, but I did. Just but you watch. but you don't. But you didn't hip drop tackle. No, I was no. going to say to me, hip drop tackling is a very me, specific thing. And it's a lot of these guys that you see nowadays who catch who who, who catch tackle. Yeah, like to me, it's, I think yeah. those are the guys that that you you say, okay, bro. 
You got to hit. You got to tackle. Because yeah. I see a lot of linebackers waiting for the guy to get on the side. I'm like, I'm going to jump on the back of him yeah. and try to pull him down. So yeah. if you want to highlight those guys, yes, because I feel like that's the only time you see this tackle being made. Or if it's someone that just so op- so awkwardly tackled a guy yeah. and he didn't realize that this guy is strong and the guy started getting carried and he's like, oh, well, I got to save myself because yeah. I'm going to look bad on TV. Yeah. So you, You're right. My hip tackling didn't come with DB, I mean, with wide receivers or running back. It came with tight ends. Yeah. It came with big guys. Because tight ends are so damn, I need to I need to use everything I got. And so I'm grabbing you. Imagine me grabbing you. You dragging me. And now I got to holler, Shante, I need you. Because <laughs> like, I need to get you down. And just yeah. to be clear, like you can still – drop your hip to tackle. Yeah, yeah. I just can't drop on your legs. legs. Drop on your yeah. legs. And yeah. so it's a <laughs> the margin for error here seems a like it's very line. small, it's but line. they'll figure it out. They always do. Yeah. All right. So now we have a legend lineup. And this segment is presented by Northwest Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of the Washington Commander. Stop searching. Go Northwest. Check out nwfcu.org slash Washington to see how easy it is to join. And our Northwest can help make your money work for you. Stop by a branch or visit nwfcu.org slash Washington today. Man, that those letters just messed with my dyslexia yeah, so I bad. Say, yeah, I see your vertigo. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whoa. Yeah. So Here we go. Back up and wake so, up back. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is we're going to make a roster of veterans. A baseball lineup. A baseball lineup. And yes. so I don't know that much about baseball, but our producer, Jason. I love baseball. I love Just national. the guy, Jason, a did a great fans. job of getting this all set up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So basically what he's done is he said, we're going to make like a hitting lineup for baseball. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to put kind of Washington legends in there. So number one in the in the hitting lineup yeah. is a consistent hitter, someone above average speed, gets on base, right? So that's yeah. kind of what we're looking for. So yeah. we'll read off each position as we go down just to kind of give some clarity. Yeah. Let's start with number one here. Yeah. Who kind of fits that mold, do you think, in the in the storied history of the Washington franchise? I'm my lead off hitter. And we got we all gotta be yeah. on the same page with this, yeah. brother. My lead off hitter is Dare Green. Wow. Way above every speed, he gonna get on the base. He gonna allow the next hitter to make sure. Like I want, I want the first guy on base to be a, a, a base stealing threat. But isn't he like? Um, isn't he like a? He's like a home run guy though, because he made big plays, interceptions, he's tackles. He's more Willie Mays. Hey, he more speed. Like once I'm on the bags, now you got to watch him. Hey, Daryl is at second base. He could yeah. steal third. Like now, I mean, he becomes a legit <clears throat> threat for the second hitter. Because the second hitter is a power hitter, right? Yeah. He no, won't, won't. So, second hitter is the best contact hitter who has good bat control. Mm. Surgeon with the bat. So, yeah. that means the ball will get it, get into the field with yeah. this guy. And if I got Daryl Green leading off, it, I got a threat to go in and score right now. So are we actually, Jason, I got a question for you. Can you come over here for a second? Are <laughs> yeah. we actually like kind of, are we saying this is the, based on athletic traits, this yeah. is what we're trying to do? Or are we saying based on play style while they were here? Whatever you want to do, man, this is not right. that serious. Yeah, both <laughs> things could be right. I, I'm taking this pretty serious, guys. I'm taking yeah. this pretty serious. Yeah. I, think, I think both things could be right. I like that. Uh, when I heard it, I put myself there. Yeah. I said, you know, because the first thing stood out was consistent hitter. Yeah. And when I think a consistent hitter in a football terminology, yeah. it's a guy that's moving the chains consistently Always in my there. position. You know yeah. what I'm saying? All right. All right. So I was like, okay, when it was a, a, a first down need to be made, even when I was long in a two and I was a third down guy coming in, I was in the I was in the option of getting the ball, moving yep. the change. You know, I was a guy. I remember like I, uh, um, you know, I played cards in the off season with, um, Antrell Rowe, and you yep. know, Antrell's a UM guy. He was younger than me, but he played with the Giants, and he was like, he, he's like, Tanner, you know what I hate, man? You know, when you move to the slot, we begin ready for y'all games, and our DB coach would tell the young guys. Don't get don't get sidetracked and see eighty nine coming the game and think he's he, he's no longer eighty nine. Eighty nine still gonna move the chains on you, so don't be that guy. Mm-hmm. And he said, "I be damn you." We, third down, you you got a first down. He said the coach is shaking his head at us. So I laugh when I had those conversations with guys because yeah. I never considered myself as still like being a guy that you talked about in your locker room year 12, 13, and fourteen. Because I'm in yeah. the slot and I'm like, yeah, I'm coming in third down. But so when I saw this, I said, "Oh, that's me. You know, that's a guy that's gonna get on base." 
and let everybody else do their thing. I can live know? with that. I can I can live with Santana. <laughs> what off. about like yeah. uh, like Riggins or somebody like just a guy who's gonna be consistent, like Cloud of Dust, get on there? Uh, not a, not my lead off. R- R- but I, so you're like so we're not talking play style here. We're talking more like no, kind we, of we, physical. We're body. mixing the athlete. <laughs> And the play style. And the play style. Okay, I like both those. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So, so we go Santana, lead off. I mean, either one is fine. Yeah, like, yeah, it's fine. Santa? Yeah, it's no wrong or right answer. I just think yeah. it's just us saying who we like at that spot. All right, number two. Yeah. Best contact hitter who has good bat control, surgeon with the bat. I don't know if it's because he said surgeon, but I the think it's surgeon is, is, the, is the number one thing standing out in my head. Yeah. I'm going to start this one off. I'm going to say D Hall. Okay. I'm going to give you my example why. And like I said, we was trying to yeah, fit, yeah, fit them fine. into what yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. He also played baseball. Yeah. yeah. Funny story was. about D Hall. So And one of the things about go go ahead. Do you remember during the lockout year? I remember D Hall we're having a meeting with the NFLPA and we're all talking about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna save this money and we mm-hmm. had this emergency fund if it weren't really long and everyone's taking it really serious and D Hall says he stands up and says, Can I just go play baseball? <laughs> like <laughs> in the MLB? Yeah. And I was like, What? And he, he's a very good baseball no, player. Yeah, very like, good. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he was a hell of an athlete. I know. Yeah. Like, didn't he play basketball too? He was no, crazy. He can do everything. Oh, he can play. Listen, one of the best, one of the better athletes I've been around. I think I've been around some like class A athletes. Yeah, like yeah. class A. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyway, so D Hall's for your second. So one. when you, when you, okay, they have number two best best contact hitter. Yeah. I think, and I'm not so so. Um, I'm not trying to say that he was a good hitter when it came to football, but when it, when it comes to his position, being a cornerback, yeah. Yeah. the things that stood out to me about D. Hall, he was a surgeon at what he did best. Yeah. And this says a surgeon with the bat. Yeah. He was a surgeon at dissecting yeah. when the when jump. the jump that dog yeah. on interception. Yeah. So I, I think of him, he's a he's a perfect guy for that, you know, that fit, you know, mm-hmm. that criteria that just he was one of those guys that don't try him over there because he's good at what he does and he's gonna for show sure Make it hurt for you. And he's gonna you know? be a good outfielder too. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to put him at shortstop. Yeah. Like, so yeah. You know, nah, he I, was. I, I can dig D. Howe right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking like Sonny Jurgensen because the surgeon, you know, like that kind of precision element. But okay. Again, okay. But again, like I, like D. Howe is a better athlete than yeah, Sonny. Yeah. No offense to Sonny, but yeah. you know. All right. Okay. Number three. This is easy. All around best hitter, contact, power, smarts. London Fletcher. <laughs> you going London here? London would you, where would you, where would you who, who go? Else? I would go on Sean Taylor there. Sean Taylor as opposed to, as opposed to four power He's a scary one, though. Come on, now. Yeah, no, no, come I on, see, now. You I get, see, you, see you see got, come on, baby. I see the scary. You got to read a little more, no, man. No, but when I see, when I see all around, <laughs> when I see all around, I think that's what brought me to Sean yeah. because... But London was an athlete. Yeah, London look, was a point guard in basketball. He can run better than the that's average. That's why I um, told you to watch the he, dynasty. He London pick, is on there. Yeah, oh, he's on there. And he get in the interception. He get an interception. He do a spin move. Mm-hmm. He show you young London. Uh-huh. He almost got Tom Brady fired. <laughs> right? So I enjoy that one. Yeah. I can dig London there because we are going to put Sean Terry, I mean, Taylor the scary guy. Yeah, yeah. He's the scary guy, so yeah, power hitter. He's a power hitter. Yeah. So what is it? Hits hits the dingers, makes the other team scared. I was going to say Trent Williams for this one, honestly. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a good one, one too. That's but I mean, he's, he's a freaky a dude. Yeah. He's a freaky dude. But Sean Taylor, Trent Williams, kind of that freak athlete that fits in that spot. The yeah. guy that, I mean, like, so for Trent, I mean, obviously everyone knows Sean Taylor, but for Trent, yeah. like, he was that dude, man. You remember him running down on screens, getting out in front, setting the tone? Have you ever played basketball with Trent? Uh, dude, I remember walking I in. I hooped with him. In. When we Trent did, told me he played running back as a kid, I said, yeah. He was. He dude. said he just grew up one day. He he got older one day and got bigger. And, yeah. and My just favorite grew. thing about Trent ever is him making tackles on interceptions. Yeah. Like, because he would run down. He'd run past people sink his hips and like light dudes up and i said oh man like where'd you learn how to do that he's like i used to cover punts in college yeah he used to cover punts in college <laughs> what yeah that just like adelius thomas was a gunner i know you like what are you yeah. doing yes. man like he's an this, athlete man i remember walking up playing the baltimore my first year and i as a corner i have to block the gunner for mm-hmm. the punt returner and jerry i mean my coach was like hey we're gonna put uh this linebacker out there with you to help you. I like, for what? Because you're going to have to block a dead. So you don't, so you don't watch film? Is what no, you're telling me? No, no. This is before the week started. <laughs> oh. And I was like, all right, that's fine. Because I knew a dead he's from Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, he is the gunner. Yeah. And he's the best gunner in the NFL. Yeah. And I was like, my God, what have I got myself in? He's, was he... He was like big. Hey, six four, three I mean, two hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. Ran a four four yeah. forty. He, he, what position he, he play in college? Linebacker? Linebacker. Mm-hmm. Him, him, uh all these boys was at USM at the same time. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh Pat Sertain, mm-hmm. Adelius Thomas, 
Uh, they had like seven pros. Uh, T.J. Slaughter, all oh, these right, guys. Right, like right. they was all and Todd Pinkston. They mm-hmm. was all at the school at the same exact time. That's pretty yeah, wild. That's that was like when like Greg Hardy or like even when Darren Waller was playing Gunner. Like yeah. Darren Waller is like six yeah, six, he's like two fifty, yes. covering down there. Anyway, so we got a little sidetrack. So five hitter in the fifth spot is the contact with some pop like number three but just a little less in ability i got reed dowdy reed dowdy reed, i gotta show reed dowdy some love man dude reed dowdy was reed dowdy would run through your out, grandma man. when you hit me he would and won't and won't blink you know yeah. and but you put him in space oh it's, hey, it's listen, a wrap it, i was you know reed reed was my, we, we was dbs together yeah. and see people don't understand reed Boy, hearing aid. Yeah. And people didn't know he couldn't hear. You tell this story all the time. <laughs> I love it. Every time we talk about hey, it. I love it. Because Bree <laughs> used to get so mad at me. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I'm the only type of guy that played tricks during a game. Wait, you play tricks in a game? No yeah, way. Yeah, you know, I get to the huddle. <laughs> and Reed will look at me because he waiting on me to tell him to call. And I just, I do this with my lips and I'll be like. Yeah, making no sound. Yeah, no terrib- sound. He'd terrible. be like, hey, what's the call? The I, Reed I, was I, such a good dude. <laughs> You're just making that guy, and he was probably like young when you played with him too. Yes. Real, real young, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But 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 listen, Reed would go into we'll run a game through a wall for you though. With his body, seventy percent, he'll leave his body be every bit of two percent. Yeah. Dude, he used, to, he used to give his body. Yeah. Up. I remember him tackling Brandon Jacobs, like just throwing his soul into the tackle. <laughs> they, He'd come out with like a broken sternum, and then not and play the rest. He played the rest of the game. Oh, like, no, dude he was an animal. Game, yes. for, for all our fans that's listening to this, y'all y'all give a special shout to Reed. Make sure y'all tag him on this <laughs> podcast because we got to get Reed out more flowers, man. He yeah. was one of those guys that you know how like when you're on a team with guys, he keeps the team together it's not even that the glue it's like i told you how i was with guys like yeah. you might not talk i to might him. not share nothing with you yeah but i had love for reed i would look at reed and like you know what i, I, I want i Good take dude. i, I invite him to my house for dinner like he's he one of those kind of guys we reed showed up with a neck brace on playing <laughs> scroll like, <laughs> oh he had the neck roll oh, he yeah. had the neck roll that's right because his neck was, yeah. uh, was, <laughs> <laughs> he probably had a, a, a crack uh v5 uh, dude <laughs> he was crazy man like yeah. he was not nah, like he, a big guy he wasn't rap right bro yeah, but he threw his body around you know reed said i got one way to make he would have been great for this defense here this defense they brought he would have been great for this yeah. defense yeah. there, man. No doubt. Um, anybody else that kind of fits that mold? Uh, I got another read. Tight end. Reed. Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed. Oh. Jordan Reed. Hey, I just, I, Jordan Reed is one of the biggest Washington football ifs ever. Yeah. I just think this dude talent was through the roof. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, just, I'm, I think highly of the guy. Yeah. I mean, he was, uh, uh, you know, outside of Santana, maybe the best route runner that I played with in my career. Mm, I appreciate it. You know that. what I'm saying? But yeah, like that was, type of smooth. guy. Like I remember him doing one-on-ones with the DBs. I remember, uh, this is not to hate on Josh Norman. He came to first practice. Josh Norman's this guy, just made all this, all money, this money, all this money. I remember that. He's balling in Carolina. It's his yeah. first day of practice. And Jordan's like, all right, let's do one-on-ones. And it's like kind of like, no, you're a tight end. And Jordan gets out there. Bop, 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 bop. And I was like, oh, dang. He, hey, De- Devontae <laughs> Adams, when I watch Adams, him and Jordan Reed run their routes. Mm, very similar. They, yeah. they, they, like basketball players. Yeah, they're so similar. patient. Yeah, I'll just know how, da-da, know how to set you up. up. Yeah. All right, so number six. Y'all going to laugh with this one. Swings for the fences. Swings out of his shoes will strike out a lot. I got LeRon Landry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's hey, not bad. That's my dog, but that damn Landry going, hey, he either going to knock you out or he, he going to miss me. <laughs> he going to hit his teammate. <laughs> hey, that damn Landry. That's to funny, LeRun. man. That's funny, Tanner. It's so funny. I talked to LaRun two weeks ago. Oh, for real? We gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have him call in on one of our shows. Yeah, oh, man. Nice. So we're going to get him back in the fold, but you hit this one right on the Bro, head. Bro, that damn that line. LA you, know what? you know what always stands out to me? Him getting that DJ, that game against oh, the first Philly. game of the season, talking that crap to DJ Before and the, the first player of the game. They went AD. Look, on. they did this to that boy, and that boy came up running. And He's the post safety. Yes. I'm like, you bitch. <laughs> Why did you bite from back yeah. there, man? Also, I know Laurent gets a lot of hate for that play specifically, but my rookie year. That dude was on pace to be defensive MVP. <laughs> hey, yeah. I think through like six games, he had like 105 tackles. Yes. Two interceptions and five sacks. That was through like eight games. No, you're right. And, and no, finish. Go ahead, finish. I do remember. People, people forget that like he was, like when he was on, 
He was on. They you know what I hate for Le- of Sean. No, I was yeah. gonna say this though. I hate for LeRon that he didn't get a chance to have Sean. Because if he'd uh, had Sean, the whole entire time. It would have made his yeah. career. Like yep. having Sean, because Sean would no longer have to play strong. Just let Sean, let LeRon go up there and do what he wanna do. Yeah. He wanna he wanna he wanna go in there and eat. He wanna go out there and tackle. Sean could have played that center field. And oh, he was a strong look, safety naturally. Yeah, yeah, naturally. But he was a hell of a it's cover safety, safety too, hey, man. He would go sideline to sideline. We side had line. at that time. You talking me, Sean Springs, Carlos Rogers, yeah. uh, Sean Taylor. Run, that, that, you can't get too many defensive backfields like Bro, that. You can't. Yeah. You like, can't. no. Then we added D. Hall in the middle of the yeah. scene. Like, you got to realize when we stepped, like, my DB coach, like, I ain't got to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm going to put whatever five of y'all I want to put And you know what was so sad about that? Because as a receiver, I see this every day. And I'm like, <laughs> how in the hell they getting beat? And then yeah. you look up at our front line. We, we got no nobody, rush. nobody getting after the quarterback. I mean, it was at one time, like, I sat down. I told you, I, I waited for D. Hall to come off the field. And D. Hall came off like he was like piss. And I said, bro, I counted the routes. Wes, Wes Welker ran eight different routes to get open. And Tom was just sitting there waiting. Hmm. D. Hall had covered him so long well, yeah. to where he couldn't cover him no more. We, we, and then he just he got open and then boop, touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, D. Hall, that wasn't your fault, bro. No one putting pressure on this quarterback. Yeah. So I hate the fact that we had so much talent in our yeah. secondary, yeah. man, and we just didn't have no we didn't have a good enough rush. Didn't, right. didn't come together. I like that one though. That's probably the best one so far. All right, All right seven. You're okay. Nothing great, but everything you do everything well. Yeah, that's me. Is it you? Yeah. Nah, I can't believe you say that. Yourself like that. I yeah. say I, I put Kedrick Gosen. I was gonna say Kedrick. Yeah. I put Kedrick. I think he was just solid, man. Like he was one of those guys. Cold like style. you know, they didn't give him no credit, but he was every time you put him in the game, he made a play. Yeah, he made a play. Dude, made a Kedrick play. was made excellent at that. Like he was just <laughs> such a good leader. Very solid. All right. I'm trying to think, you got, you got another one? I got Rocky McIntosh. Rocky McIntosh. That's a good one. Because <laughs> nothing makes me feel better than walking to a huddle and look around and Rocky smile. I, I still <laughs> I still laugh at the story that London gave me with Rocky. He said, Ted, I had to tell you this story one day about Rocky. You know, Rocky Hurricane. He said, man, you know, you know, as a linebacker, you know, I watch so much to yeah. where is that if I see something go different, I'm a, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna call a play that's gonna benefit and I'm gonna that it up. because of the, because we know it we yeah. ran in the week before or yeah. whatever he say man I ain't trying to put your boy on, I ain't trying to put him out there he say I told Rocky hey we gonna do this and we gonna do this because they keep doing it Rocky say nah, nah we ain't oh, go yeah. we ain't go over that this week <laughs> he I'm say, gonna do exactly he say, what I'm said. doing what Coach <laughs> said he say Rocky we done ran it before yeah. not this week though <laughs> we ain't doing it practice that's funny. he say Rocky would not go outside Rocky the box do what yeah. you tell him so it was just funny. Nothing else. You it understand? was funny because I remember me and Reggie doing that in, in college. So, you know, for, for you know, we played together for four years, you know, as true freshmen. You know, Reggie started as a true freshman. I came in on third downs as a slot receiver. And then the next year I started at the Z and still played slot. So Reggie got tired of like, we just line up on the same side. We just do everybody knows Reggie's on the ball. Yeah. Tanner's off the ball. Yeah. So we got to the point that every time we came in to we was doing uh Zach or Zip, Zach or Zip would be like I Zach to the other side or zip I zip yeah, to yeah. the short side motions, we were like those are motions yeah those are motions and when we had like you know bunch formations or something instead of Reggie taking the ball Tan you take the ball mm. Reggie you come over so CJ our receiver coach which is the head coach of the Houston team right now uh, for the UFL CJ got mad he got us on the phone bro say bro you know he from New Orleans say bro what y'all doing out there and Reggie's like bro calm down he made the play right he's like I just don't want the other guys to get confused he said no we letting everybody know that me and Tanner are gonna switch positions to try to get other guys open. Yeah. And he said, You motherfucker, y'all don't y'all made it. Y'all, y'all don't need me no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was just funny because once you watch the film, you yeah. realize that we really was out there, you know, playing chess instead yeah. of checkers. That's you know incredible. what I mean? Do you do that on your own? We did it on our yeah. own. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Because I know like Kyle would spend like days formationing trying to switch it up. and get <laughs> And you guys just said we was to the point where we played as freshmen. Yeah, we dominated as freshmen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had great sophomore season. We had our junior year. Man, let's go out and play with these guys now. You know, we gonna make you think a little more because now you you can't just say Reggie the X, Tanner the Z. We, the film gonna tell us the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Okay, so we're on eight now. Eight, and that is you're here for defense. Not a good hitter, but you're an excellent fielder. So I don't even. That's where I got stuck at. Yeah, like it's you, like you. Gotta I play. didn't have a guy because I'm like, well, I got to be a defensive guy. It gotta be, right? <laughs> it gotta be a with defensive no guy. offensive prowess. 
<laughs> what is off- but how are you a defensive player with offensive prowess? You got something, Jason? What we got? Well, D-Hall was a, off- a defensive player with offensive yeah, prowess. Yeah. Sean Taylor had offensive, yeah, offensive prowess. prowess. Champ Bailey uh, played and got receiving yards and rushing yards. Maybe you can look at it as a guy that did one thing exceptionally well. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that was his thing. Yeah. Andre Carter. Dude, what about Lorenzo Alexander? Lorenzo oh, Alexander. So, but, one but, man game, did I know, everything. I know, but, but I'm saying he just was like Well, that. he don't fit that because he, he, was, he, was, he was great. Yeah, so <laughs> Dude, whatever you needed guy, him yeah. to do that week. But like the special Don't teams, the special teams element, like the special teams ability, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like he just was a, he's a dude. All right, yes, let's man. go Mike Sellers here. Cause uh, Mike. Yeah, I'm right. just here. Yeah, Blocked I'm just, bingo. And yeah. did his, he yeah. did what he did. Oh, I like Great. I like Mike yeah. for that. I yeah, like Mike, Mike Sellers. That. All right. Um, sp- last one. Number nine. Speed, Speed Demon. Demon. Mm. So Not a great hitter. Gay Santana, number one, is the lead off. This got to be Daryl Green. Nah, but it's on field though. But it's not, not, a, not a great hitter, hitter but, but can't fly. fly. Like so nah, to me, this is like we need somebody who this is tackle. like Armstrong. We need somebody who, Armstrong. We need somebody who wasn't great at their position, but was great when it came to just running by you. So you got to look at the whole thing. So Daryl Green was great. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All right, all, all right. around great. So we need a guy uh, who wasn't. His, what's his first name? Armstrong. The, um, yeah, Armstrong. Um, well, I know who you're talking about. Well, okay. Why was he? But I would go with the return guy that was here. The bank, Brandon, Brandon Banks. Banks. dude Armstrong, dude. This this story about Armstrong. So we used to do Both this. Of them jobs, they was the yeah. fly. So Armstrong, I can't remember his first name. Brandon sorry. Banks. Yeah, I yep. sorry Brandon. about that. But he used we used to do flying. You could run into the kickoff, right? Yeah. yeah. And so Danny Smith used mm-hmm. to measure forty times. Yeah, to see how so fast it was yeah. a flying forty. Anthony Armstrong, yeah. great dude. Sorry, oh, I couldn't remember your first name, Anthony. Um, but anyway, so he used to do flying 40 times. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were in a meeting one time, and he's going over everyone's flying 40 time. So, like, mine's like a 4.8. You know, like, it's like my normal nice. 40 time. He's slow. And he gets to Anthony, who was the number two. And you know what it was? If you can guess it. It was like 4.2. Four, four no, four. it was a 3.7. Oh, I, I know it was crazy. It was but a 3.7. I, I thought it was like four, one. Dude God. could straight nah, gas. He could yeah, listen, he you ran him, back You remember in 2010, man, when he became the starter at Z? He almost had like a thousand. No, he had 900. I had a, I had a thousand that year. He had 900. Yeah. And I was mad because I'm like, this was going to get him paid. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, bro. And he, me, I remember me and him had that conversation. I was like, bro, so all you need is that thousand. Because you know, these teams will look at that and be like, well, he just got a thousand yards. Yeah. We got to pay him. Yeah, like a one. A thousand yard receiver, you yeah. know? And he ended up going to the Cowboys next year. Was that the next year? Yeah, it was the next that. year. They he didn't, didn't use him. He didn't come back. They didn't even use him, uh, man. Yeah. I'm like, Damn. Yeah, he, that dude could straight fly. Brandon Banks could fly. Did you play with anybody yeah. like that? Fred, that man, was, listen, man. Hey, my generation was speed personified. I, I got a great story about Brandon. So, um, you know, Brandon's just come straight out fly. Dude. Little dude. Uh, yeah. So you have to use, you, you know. Do you hear the story about his 40? Sorry to cut you off. No, nah, I didn't hear the story. So we were, we, we were, he was here for, he was a tryout guy. Mm-hmm. We were at their same rookie minicamp. We came in at the same time. So they said, hey, everybody who's not a priority for agent has to come out and run a 40 if they want. Yeah. So Brandon is fully spatted up, mm-hmm. just finished practice, mind you, okay? Yeah. On that turf outside, the yeah. Astro yeah. turf, yeah, yeah, it's terrible. he ran a 4-2, 4-2-4 wow. in spatted cleats on Astro turf after practice. <sighs> Dang. He could fly. That, yeah, that's could why fly. I said Brandon Bank, but hey, no. Dante Stallworth. Yeah. Can fly too. Yeah, he can yeah. fly too. Yeah, like so. Who's Sorry, trying to cut you so off. no, no. Getting back to Brandon. So he was running these kickoffs. He kept breaking them. And I would remember when I was with the Jets, I had a guy named Jonathan Carter, and he was a guy from um, Troy. He from Alabama, yeah. Alabama bred. Troy guy had to played at Troy. He, had, he played a year at the Giants. He came over to us, and I remember I take I took him home one off season and brought him back. And um, Herm was brought me in his office. Said, "Hey, you did that?" So I'm like, "What you talking about?" He say, "He say who." Who, um, Jay, we called him Jay Gutter. He said, who Jay Gutter was working with this summer? I said, oh, no, I took him to Miami with me. We worked together. He said, Tanner, you got a job at this. If you ever want to come and be a coach. He said, I have never seen a turner. The guy was a running back, but he was tall. The man was running routes, like, but all he did was just watch me run routes, and he just did everything I did. So I couldn't take credit for it, but he just came around guys like myself. So fast fast forward, Brandon Banks reminded me of Jay Gutter. They so fast. Yeah. But you're in the NFL. Everybody's fast. Yeah. So they would break these things, and guys would catch them in an angle. So I told Jonathan the same way I told Brandon. I say, bro, when you get in the open, cut across field. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to outrun everybody. Break the angle. Get the guy up on you and, and break. Put, yeah. a, put your foot in the ground. Yeah. His first return, both of those guys, first return was all for me telling him oh, to do really? that. Oh, yeah. really? Both of those guys. So That's funny. Nice. Yeah. Hannah, man, <laughs> great coach. All right, so Jason, you got, the, you got our team, you got our lineup. I got it. All right, I, I want to reiterate here to our fans, if we didn't say it, these are guys that you played with. 
Most of like them. there are yeah, a lot mostly, of legends yeah, yeah, yeah. that are obviously Hall of Fame. Yeah, we didn't want to go too. We didn't want to dig too guys deep. you know, right? All yeah. right. Uh, so here we go. Leading off, Santana Moss, D. Hall, London Fletcher, Sean Taylor cleaning up, Reed Dowdy, Leron Langey just swinging for the fences, <laughs> Kendrick Goldson, Mike Sellers, and then Anthony Armstrong or Brandon Bakes. And I put it D. H. Trent Williams. Oh, there goes mm-hmm. yeah. 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 I like that. There, there you go. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. It, it had no rhyme or reason mm-hmm. to yeah. it. No, no major group. Couldn't be wrong or right. Yeah. Some guys people remember. Some guys people don't. But I also would like to tell, ask the fans, tell us who you think yeah. that's best for those slots. Yeah. That's a great idea. Absolutely. You know, and I'm going to throw one out to you guys. All right. Who's the ace? The starting pitcher, starting pitcher, the guy. Mm. You need you need him to come in. You're like an ace in baseball. If you're losing four games, like yeah. you're you're ready for this guy to come in. He's gonna I, put you back my on track. Guy, people ain't gonna like this one, but he threw gas all the time. And they probably got him fired. Pat Ramsey. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, no, it. Yeah, it yeah. and you was and you, and you was sniffing that gas because you because you tripping right now. So <laughs> so what I would say is this is the only time I would dig deep outside of a guy that that I play with, and I'm only gonna do it because I feel like this guy deserves that. I say Joe Theismann. Mm. Thiesman. Hey, people don't Thiesman understand. Joe used kid. to return punts. We talk so much about Doug. Yeah. Doug did a, a hell of a job, yeah. winning, you know, winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. But I think Thiesman and Ripken don't get enough credit for what yeah. they've done as, yeah. as quarterbacks here. Yeah. And, and Joe, do he Joe's everywhere. He's yeah. all over everywhere. But we don't talk enough yeah. about who he was to this team before he got oh, hurt. I love Joe. He he was that dude. Hey, if your name <laughs> Joe about, and you play football in the NFL, you great. Yeah. I don't know no bad Joe. Now, if you look at his career, like Joe was like. Like you know how you sit here and tell us you did everything? Yeah. Joe actually did oh, no, everything. No, no, he, <laughs> he did. Like, he did he mean, Mary turned punts in the I game. Mean, like he number like, seriously. He number eight on the punt return list That's here crazy. of average. Yeah. He average turned punts, punts, bro. Crazy. Yeah. As a quarterback. So I was gonna say, is there anybody like from a pass rush standpoint that would be like the closer for you? Like I was thinking like Ryan Kerrigan, like Bruce I Smith. Say, maybe. I played with Bruce. <sighs> but I he was but Ryan. he was like near the end though, right? Yeah, like but, he was he was still he could still pass rush. Yeah. So, you know, you got your Drake Carters of the world. Yeah. You got, you know, if, if I can say one position we probably ain't hit on all the time, probably it's been paired with you I'm got a, Charles Mann and Dexter Mann. I'm I'm like yeah, yeah, those guys. We didn't we didn't go that deep. But I'm gonna yeah. say a guy who was with us who I feel like the defense changed and it and it messed him up. Uh MY, Marcus Washington. Yeah. If he was able to yeah. play the play the guy, if he was able to get outside as an outside linebacker three, and, four rush. and just go and go out to the quarterback rush. Yeah. and do what he did best, man, this guy would have been a pro bowler every year. LeVar Arrington too. Yeah. LeVar yeah. was not supposed to be in space. Yeah. Just kind of wonder because like I always think of, you know, obviously quarterbacks throwing guys. I, so I, I, rush, I would probably go LeVar. Because yeah. I thought LeVar had some special, special traits too. Yeah, yeah. He was different. He was just an animal, man. Yeah. He just yeah. Right, yeah. And so like Tana said, if you guys have different lists, maybe you're yeah. an older fan, you want those guys, those kind of legends to be you in this mix. Want some leather heads in there? Yeah, yeah. Put them in there, man. We love to hear it. Because I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah get out for Sammy Ball. Ball. That's you know right. That's right. So guys, thanks for joining and thanks for listening. And uh, that's going to do it. Thanks. We are brought to you by Bet365. It Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. That's why we offer an in-game experience which covers over 78 sports and over 780,000 live streams to 90 million customers worldwide. Our online betting brand is powered by a world-class proprietary product and over 7,000 employees across the globe. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, the official sporting betting partner of your Washington Commanders. Must be 21 plus and physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER.